Welcome to our chapel service today. I am Chaplain Malcolm, and I'm joined by Chaplain Sharon, and we are part of the team of chaplains of Wesley Mission Queensland. And it's our privilege and honour to lead us in worship today. We acknowledge our country, we acknowledge the custodians of the land in which we stand and worship upon, and we pay respects to the elders past, present and emerging. And we light our Christ candle as a symbol that Christ is the light of the world, and in and through Christ there is no darkness. Our call to worship. Come, all who are hungry and thirsty, for the Lord will provide for our needs. Come this day to the table of the Lord. Here we will find welcome and sustenance. And come to this time of gathering and praise. Lord, we come with open hearts and spirits to receive your gracious gift of love. Amen. Let us join together in our first hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Let's come to our time of prayer of adoration and confession. Most wonderful God, you are beyond our sight, above our thought, infinite, eternal and unsearchable. Your wisdom shines in all your works. Your glory is shown in your goodness to all people. Your grace and truth are revealed in Christ. Therefore, we adore you, our God, forever and ever. A prayer of confession. We admit that when we offer the work of human hands, the bread and the wine, it is hard for us to imagine that these gifts will be enough for you to hold and transform into nourishment for us and the world. Forgive us when we lack faith. 
forgive us when we reduce your feast to a small table. If we ever think that we or others are not worthy of the abundance of your feast because we have little to bring or too much that is unworthy to be present, forgive us when we lack faith. Forgive us when we reduce your feast to a small table. If we sometimes receive your holy food for our lives and take it for granted as though there is no wonder there because it is so familiar, or because we take your gifts for granted, forgive us when we lack faith. Forgive us when we reduce your feast to a small table. As with people of old, Jesus refuses to send us away. The feast of grace and hope is given again as a free and liberating gift of the Christ. We are forgiven. Let us together say, thanks be to God. And we continue to worship with our next hymn, Thine Be the Glory. reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 to 21. Let us hear the word of God. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him, because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a, on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. 
the Jewish Passover festival was near. And when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up, Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. And there was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down, about 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they, all, when they had all enough to eat, he said to the disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capnaum. But now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. And when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my heart and meditations of our souls be to honour and serve you, Lord. Speak to us as we, your children, listen. Amen. In the story we just heard, a large crowd came to Jesus, and I think they probably had travelled a long way. And Jesus said to one of his disciples, Philip, where are we going to buy enough food to feed these people? I don't know about you, but I think Philip might have thought, how on earth does Jesus think we are going to feed all these people? Philip said to Jesus, that even if they spent six months' wages on food, the people would only get a little bit. And then another said to Jesus, another of Jesus' disciples, Andrew, came and said, There is a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what is that amongst so many people? Jesus accepted what the little boy had to give. And he got the disciples to get the people to sit down on the green grass. And Jesus gave thanks to God for the bread and fish. And he began to give the food to the people. We don't know how Jesus did this. But after all the people had eaten all they wanted, the disciples were able to collect 12 baskets of leftover food. I think that this is a great story. But do you know what I think is special about this? Is that Jesus just accepted and was able to use something that seemed very small. 
And Jesus was able to do great things with this. This reminds me that whatever we are able to give to Jesus, no matter how small, Jesus is able to use and to do far more than we can ever dream. Let me share a story with you that was shared to me. It's about a lady who lived in a place like this, like our courts and our residences. And she was not able to do very much for herself. In fact, the staff had to help her with just about everything. And one day she was a little down and she felt as though she had nothing that she could offer to God. But this lady had a beautiful smile. And whenever people came into her room, she would give them a gorgeous smile. Many of the staff had told me just how much they really appreciated this lady. And I was able to tell her that God was using her smile to make people happy. Just like the little boy didn't seem to have much to offer Jesus, this lady didn't think she had much to offer to God. But Jesus was able to use the little boy's lunch to help others, and God was able to use this beautiful lady's smile to brighten up the day of the staff and visitors and those she encountered. So let us remember that whatever we offer to God, it doesn't matter how small, God is able to use this to help others. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's join together in singing our next hymn, Just As I Am.
Let us pray. God of endless generosity, we face a world where many people have never experienced abundance, where many people cannot even see their next meagre meal ahead. So today we especially remember those who are hungry, hungry for food, hungry for love, hungry for an end to suffering and exploitation, hungry for freedom, hungry for justice, hungry for forgiveness, hungry for peace. O oh God, we pray that their needs may be met and we pray that where we are a means by which you are able to meet their needs, then we will respond in generous and appropriate ways. We pray for ourselves that we might recognise the gifts we and others have been given by you and that we might remember that when we are willing to use the gifts you have given to us, you are able to do far more than we could ever imagine. We pray these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we continue our worship with our hymn, Praise to the Lord Almighty. Oh, 
of mission and blessing. As you go, go as those who have been fed by Christ to be God's people in this place. And may the grace of Lord Jesus Christ make us confident, the love of God keep us strong, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide us in all things, now and forever. Amen.